Hi, I'm Gary. Welcome to my channel. Today, I'm looking at the new ICM Luftwaffe base set with a Polycarpov I-153 fighter and a set of figures all in one 48th scale. If you enjoy this review, please make sure you give it the Imperial thumbs up on the like button, click on the bell for future content notification, and of course, subscribe to the channel. It doesn't cost anything, but shows your support. Let's start with a look at the box it comes in. So here's the box of the I-153 in Luftwaffe service with some pilots and ground personnel, as usual. Very nice little piece of box art there. The faces look very, very much like they're modelled on people who work for ICM, which I believe they quite often are. The kit's in 148 scale, as you can see here, and the kit code is 48094. On this long side here, there's a panel here that says, indeed, the contents of the fighter with two Luftwaffe officers, a pilot and four ground personnel. Um, it also says there are three marking options for Luftwaffe use of the aircraft. And when it's complete, the aircraft will be 130 millimetres long and will have a wingspan of 208 millimetres. There are 169 parts for the assembly of the aircraft and 41 parts for the seven figures. On this long side, we have drawings of the three schemes that are included, the box cover one and two yellow schemes, or this one's just yellow front, this one's got a yellow tail, look very pretty, I'm kind of tempted by that grey and red, I think it looks really nice, and a reprise of the scale and product code here, and it does say these are for adult collectors or model makers over the age of 14 or so that's because there are some very small parts in that and that's a requirement to say so okay let's have a look inside the kit and see what we get for our money okay first of all as you'll know if you've seen any of my box reviews of ICM kits before any reviews of ICM kits before you know that I love their boxes <laughs> you know the way that the glossy bit is an outside cover and then that conceals an inner box which is corrugated cardboard really sturdy so it really protects the contents very well i am also sometimes worried that i'm going to open that and find that the contents have been crushed never have done so far because i think these are brilliant anyway inside we have a cellophane bag with various parts for the aircraft another cellophane bag with parts for the crew figures and ground figures we have the instruction sheet and inside the instruction sheet as normal there are the decals and then there's a sheet advertising their acrylic paints their acrylic paints are really lovely i tend to use them on all of their kits i'll probably be using it on this one anyway let's have a look at the kit parts in a bit more detail frame a1 is the starboard side of the fuselage uh, cockpit doors open cockpit so just the doors to e make it easy to get in and out um, and the carriage and stuff like that frame a2 is essentially the bulk of the kit so we have a single piece upper wing single piece lower wing that's integrated with the lower parts of the fuselage we have the engine assembly the cockpit tailplane um, the tubular structure, or part of the tubular structure of the cockpit as well, rear wheel control column, all sorts of bits and pieces here. Then on frame A3, we have the port side of the fuselage. These are parts of the undercarriage strutting here. Um, these are exhaust pipes, and that's a bit of the interior cabin. And finally, in the kit but not used for this aircraft are bomb racks and bombs. This is because these are Soviet bomb types now you could retain the uh, racks and use german bombs and i happen to have a set of german weapons so i'm kind of tempted to keep the bomb racks and then put german sort of 50 kilo bombs or something like that on them then there is the windshield which is the single piece on the clear transparent sprue have a look at the mouldings here they're actually pretty good um this yes, 148 remember and yeah they're fine i like the molding here on the over the 
there's a fabric over the ribs at the back here. Bit of a uh, thermal line there where the two different temperatures of plastic have met up in the mould. But it's not something that's sort of, you certainly, certainly can't feel anything. And I don't think you'll see that once it's had some primer on it. It looks pretty good all together. Looks nice. Um, this is a 2015 kit, so nine years old, and it's holding up very well. It has had this is the fourth release from these molds, so not bad. I mean, it's not hideous and covered in flash or anything like that. The, the moldings look very, very nice actually. So, yeah, very impressive. You really notice how nice these moldings are as these engine parts. The absolutely lovely, the cooling ribs on the cylinders are very, very nicely resolved. The cover, so you can regulate how much cooling air goes through its air-cooled engine, remember. The underside of the fuselage and the wings, again, nicely textured, nicely sort of moulded. The sculptor, sculpting of the uh, wing surface is good. The upper wing. They have gone straight into the um, leading edges of the wing here, but then there's not really much option because it's a single piece wing, so there's not a lot they can do about that. The uh, propeller, if I can get focus, prop looks really nice. Nicely sort of detailed in there. The wheels, wheels are grand. Everything looks very good, very clean, uh, very sharp. Um, yeah, it's tail planes there again with that moulding over the ribs. Really, really very impressed by this. One thing, if, if we look at the um, this framework from the fuselage, you can see there's just a bit of a mould line there. But then that's actually not that unexpected. So it looks pretty good. I think it looks really good actually. Then there's the frame for the seven figures, so four are pretty much complete, apart from arms and heads, and the rest a bit more kit form, there, there and there. But there are seven figures on this frame. Then if we have a look at the crew figure, the pilot figure here, this mod's come from 2004, so 20 odd years old, uh, beginning to look you see, the, the mouldings are actually really quite nice still. They're quite clean and sharp. The only problem is they're getting a bit of uh, closure lines here, especially here on this pilot figure. That's a lot to clean off. But otherwise, I mean, the detail is still there. It's just that the um, mould lines between the halves of the moulds are a little bit more prominent these days. It's a tiny, tiniest little bit of flash there. You know, these days, these are actually even sharper, I should say. The 148 scale figures are even sharper. But anyway, let's, have a look, let's see if we can get a look at the face. There we go. Looks, focus here on the face here. That's going to be, that's going to look okay. It's going to be easy enough to highlight all the different features there, I think. Look at some of the other bits of this. Is, a very nicely moulded piece of uniform here. This shirt is very crisp. This side of the trousers here very sharp. The um, leather jacket's got some nice sculpting on it as well. Yeah, it's all very good. All very pleasant. All very clean. I'm sure, they'll paint up very, very well. Let's look at this figure here. There we go. These will paint up really nicely, I'm sure. The decals, very nice decal sheet. Very simple decal sheet, I have to say. Um, simple in terms of number of colours involved here. Uh, simply red, a sort of a buff with a red cross for the little first aid package here. And everything else is just black and white. So relatively straightforward. The instruments are up here. Uh, crosses the swastikas are split into half to avoid any problems with any of their... Uh, partner countries and yeah looking very nice looking very crisp looking here this is our standard uh, half millimeter 
pencil there you can see the instrument decals are fine nice enough you know the, the relatively limited number of instruments on these things and the instruments weren't that big so pretty good uh this marking here for i think it's this is the one from vienna or something like austrian deployment markings very nice and as i say apart from the little beige cover here for the first aid kit there's very little to remark it's it's nicely printed sharply black and white the instructions as always very much normal for icm so color reprise of the box art here with the title scale and the kit code 48094 here is a lot of information about the polycarpath i153 that was um, in luftwaffe service here in ukrainian and of course also in english and some technical specs of the aircraft here in ukrainian and english there's a whole list of colors here these include the colors for the figures all the color call outs are in icm codes um, you can get a translation of icm codes into other manufacturers on their website there's a translation of the icons used here and there's a link to their youtube channel through a qr code there on the inside we have the frame maps for the parts the only frame anything missing that they don't want to use here is here remember we, we pointed out that the frame b had all the soviet weapons they wouldn't have they'd have luftwaffe or german weapons and those i probably will actually put on because i have some spare and then the instructions very much the usual way of things um letters for the color codes relating to the color call outs on the front here you can you might want to go through and just write on what these are so essentially you build the interior frame structure um, then the seat sits on the base with the controls the structure goes on top that forms your cockpit tub if you will then the two halves of the fuselage have their doors put on and they get closed up then they sort of drop down on top of the completed tub which sits on top of the bottom wing and then put the top wing on and construct the engine and you know that's pretty much it really um engine surrounds go on gear goes on gear doors and it's finished there's a little diagram here if you want to do the rigging you can do that with rigging wire of course you can put on there's a little mast for the radio aerial the mast is offset onto one of the wings as you can see here and there's the interplane uh, wiring here the stress wiring you can actually get a set i think um metal metallic detail in ukraine did a a photo etch set of rigging for this aircraft i don't know really how easy that is to get hold of but they did one but you can't just rig it normally anyway and then as with as normal with the way like icm do their figures they show you the completed figure and then sort of the numbers tell you which bits so number three is the hat number 13 is the face and so on and so forth and then all of the color call outs around it so they just show you the completed one don't show you a diagram of how to put it all together in my experience they actually go together very well anyway it's like they sort of sit naturally in the parts and then we have the schemes the first one is the box art scheme um, this is from uh fighter school three just outside of vienna in 1942 that's the one with the little logo on there very nice this is um pretty much like a reserve formation on the eastern front in 1942 i wouldn't have liked to have gone to war against decent aircraft in one of these but then the soviets did of course against bf 109s and the like and then this is one from the uh, Reckling Test Centre in 1942, just after they were captured, presumably, and they were trying out the finding out how good or bad they were. So that's the instruction sheet. 
There it is, an interesting set of German personnel with a captured Soviet aircraft. If you've enjoyed this video, please make sure you hit the like button and the notification bell to see all of my future releases. And of course, make sure you've subscribed to the channel. Thank you very much for watching today. See you soon. Goodbye.